Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is part three of Natalia's testimony, and we have Natalia on the line right now, and we'll go straight to her right now. Hello. Hello, Natalia. How are you? I'm great. I'm excited to uh, to finish the story, the three-part story. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been really, really super, and... Um, really glad to, to have you back again sister and please just just uh, do continue where we left off last time yes um so basically uh, i think where i finished off was that i had been doing lots of metaphysical workshops and that i had begun doing and practicing metaphysical healing myself on uh, other people and other individuals um it's especially um, through the people that I had met at the time. And so I was definitely very immersed into um, the new age and uh, metaphysical um, healings of different modalities. So at this point, um, I was very much not necessarily uh, having any personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I didn't necessarily reject him, but I didn't see him as a God. I was very much immersed and involved in um, and believing that I had activated my higher self and that because I had activated um, these higher powers and that I had awakened um, my higher self, that I was able to manifest um you know, all of these synchronicities and that I was able to heal others and elevate my consciousness. And so basically I was very much under the belief system that I was um, ascending into higher levels of consciousness. And that was basically the, uh, the purpose of life um, for me was to ascend to the higher levels of consciousness until I I reached enlightenment, um, which is basically to join with uh, you know, to, to end up in a state of unity with, with source energy. So mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily having a personal relationship with my creator or seeing God or the creator or the source as a personal being, but to just merge and to unite with an energy or a force. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically I was involved in this for, I would say, anywhere between f- five and a half to six and a half years um, from beginning to end and towards the, the latter part, um, I had, um, had mentioned previously that I was diagnosed with a, with an STI and, uh, I had basically reached the point where I wanted to completely eliminate this, uh, disease from my body and this illness. And I felt that I had learned enough and that I had immersed myself enough to kind of understand the metaphysical underpinnings and the reasons as far as I was concerned at the time as to why I had uh, attracted that disease into my body. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I reached out to some of the friends that I was um, involved uh, that I had a really, you know, close friendship with and that I was involved with, especially doing the uh, Friday night sessions that we were going to. And I said to one of my friends, um, you know, that I'm, I'm ready to kind of ascend to the next level and to live disease free. And, um, I had, what was, I was reading the 12 layers of DNA, um, from cryon. And I was definitely feeling that there was more synchronicities happening because I happened to be in the chapter of the book that pertained to healing from physical illness. And it was talking all about how, um, illness and disease and all of that basically is a teacher that comes into your life. And once you've learned the lessons and you've, you know, uh, learned what you needed from that, from that, um, disease and that illness that you are able to manifest your own self healing. And so after reading this, I felt like, okay, I'm going to reach out to my friend and their healers. I'm going to get rid of this. And, uh, so basically, um, to make a very long story short, what was um, shared with me and what ended up happening is that I was told <clears throat> that in order for this 
to happen because my friend um, was very much uh, psychic and uh, connecting with his spirit guides and also had the access to speak to my spirit guides, as I was told, um, that I had to basically surrender myself so deeply to the point of almost kind of um, metaphorically like dying unto myself. So basically to just give no resistance and to completely surrender every aspect of my being. And so I feel like now in retrospect, it was kind of like a take kind of a a different take on being born again. You know, it was kind of the, the new age on being born again, the new age version of that. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, I prepared myself mentally and physically before um, going into this healing session, you know, by meditating that day. And I ended up going to my friend's house. And um, what, ended, what ended up happening was one of the most uh, supernatural experiences I've ever had. Um, I do remember um, that at the very beginning of this session, again, I was told that I had to completely just give everything of myself up, just completely surrender everything, have no resistance. And um, I remember that uh, there was a part of, I think, the deeper, deeper part of my soul knew that there was something not really right about it because I did have resistance and I wasn't really letting myself go. And so I, I kept being told that I had to let go and I had to let go and I had to let go. Um, and there was a lot of kind of <clears throat> body uh, bodily manipulation. So basically like massage techniques and um, I was lying on the ground. And so they were like, uh, it was a couple that was, you know, moving my body at, um, so that I could you know, just like moving my legs and my arms, you know, not forcefully, quite gently, but also just kind of to kind of allow for me to continue to let go. And I finally got to the point where I was, you know, felt like a rag doll and was, um, you know, uh, just let go of everything. And so then the session fully began after that. And it was basically like a two and a half hour, extremely intense supernatural experience there was moments of intense crying to wailing um i remember myself chanting in different uh like languages that were kind of sounded like another language in some type of aboriginal or um native american language mm -hmm. so it was kind of you know it would go in different different like I would cry for a little bit and then I would go into some chanting and then some wailing so it was very 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 intense and all in the meantime um the person who was basically conducting the healing session was either you know was not didn't have his hands physically on me but was using kind of the techniques that are very common in metaphysical healing sessions where they have their hands over you like hovering over you and are kind of just moving the energy around your body and um there was very, very little conversation happening, but there was brief moments of letting me know that there was like some DNA that was being reconfigured and some DNA that was being activated and some cleansing of my chakras that was happening. Um, and it was very, very intense. Um, I remember just feeling some extremely strange sensations in my body, things being kind of like yanked out and put back in and and you know at the time I felt like it was amazing I felt like it was incredible and that I was becoming a new person and after two and a half hours of this mm -hmm. um the person told me um that I you know you this this session is finished and uh you are like a virgin now. That's what I remember him telling me that I was kind of like cleansed of all of the stuff that I've been holding on to. And that I was kind of like clean again. And I remember the physical and also the mental and emotional sensation I had was very, very, very strange. I definitely feel now like from all that I've learned in, in retrospect that I did allow a specific entities to enter me at that moment. And that's very, very powerful, um, I guess, yeah, um, uh, oppression or even possession was, was happening and happened because I remember sitting up and looking at everything around me almost as if I was looking through a very new set of eyes and looking at things for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like Natalia wasn't looking through the Natalia, regular Natalia's eyes. I felt like everything was fresh and new again. And it was very strange, very odd. And um, 
I didn't feel scared. I didn't feel any pain. I didn't feel anything per se negative, but I did feel kind of, it was very odd. It was like somebody else looking through my eyes. And, um, I told the couple, you know, that I felt a lot of peace and I was grateful and thankful and kind of in the wrap up session, they told me, um, you know, he kind of told me a little bit of details of what he felt he was downloading through the session and what his, his spirit guides and my spirit guides were communicating to him and that there was a lot of D- DNA reconfiguration and um, that, you know, the illness is no longer in my body because I've, you know, activated certain levels of DNA that don't allow for that lower vibration disease to exist in my body anymore. And, um, so I said, thank you. And I said to him, you know, I looked them both in the eye and I said, you know, the Natalia that you met before will ne- is not the same Natalia as you're looking at now. She will never be the same again. And I remember when I was speaking this to them, my voice was still my voice, but it was altered. It was, it was strange. It was like I said, like somebody else speaking through me. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of in this altered state of consciousness per se, for probably at least another two and a half to three days. And, um, like I said, I didn't feel any pain or any, um, you know, fear in my body or in my mind, but I do remember feeling like just kind of out of myself, not really knowing what was happening and what had happened. And, you know, of course I was like, yay, I don't have this disease anymore. Like I'm a new person and I've been like activated to higher levels. And so there was kind of this false sense of bliss and happiness but at the same time I didn't feel like myself (laughs) and um so I continued I continued to believe that you know I didn't have this illness anymore and I didn't necessarily uh after this particular day um even to this day like I've never I've never had the illness come back up in my body um I never had any other you know symptoms or anything like that so I I definitely believe that that session had cured me from that disease. Um, And fast forward, you know, uh, this was probably a year before I met my um, current husband. I continued to practice, you know, all of those things for a good year. And um, I kind of felt like because I was cleansed of this illness and this this disease that I was able to, um, you know, allow myself to get romantically involved with people again, because I had promised myself and the universe (laughs) that I wouldn't be involved with anyone until I felt like I had been cleansed from this, from this disease. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I felt like I was ready. And, um, I had another friend who, uh, you know, was kind of involved in this type of lifestyle as well. And we had decided to do a soulmate invitation. So we both, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically you write a letter um, inviting your soulmate into your life. And you're basically describing what qualities you want in this person, even down to what they look like and what their characteristics are like. So you're basically writing this letter of your ideal in your mind, what your ideal soulmate would be like. And you're doing a meditation after writing it and, and putting it out there, you know, like kind of a, a ritual to, you know, invite that soulmate into your life. And, um, I wrote this soulmate invitation and, uh, shortly thereafter, I think I wrote it in December of 20, 2010. And, uh, very shortly after I went on a vacation, uh, with my cousin and, um, being involved with a person, um, on holiday that I thought was that, um, because we connected so deeply and there was all these, again, synchronicities and all of these, uh, just alignments that were happening. We had so much in common spiritually and there was just so many coincidences. And so we, I ended up having like a very intense, like more or less like very spiritually focused relationship with this person while I was away for a couple of weeks. Um, and when I came back, I remember that I, and the person was quite a lot older than me, like significantly older than me. And, um, I remember coming back and, and planning on moving and taking my life over there to this location and, um, giving everything up in my current home and, and moving over to be with this person. So I was definitely under like a, 
a very deep, not necessarily hypnosis, but I was under the influence definitely of whatever um, spiritual manifestation was made there because I felt like this is it. And um, I told my mother about it and she was definitely not pleased. And I know from, you know, after speaking to her about it intensely afterwards that she started uh, like an intense prayer campaign for me. I know she was praying for me every single day, <laughs> but after this happened, I know that her prayers like stepped up quite a lot. Yeah. And uh, she tried to reach out to me to tell me that in her heart, she felt like this wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And I, I wasn't having any of it. You know, I was like, no, you know, you're just upset and you're angry because I'm choosing a different lifestyle than you than you thought I would need to have to be happy. And this is it for me. And so I basically, you know, we were very much uh, like at, 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 um, at different ends of perspective you know and we're very much like not necessarily disconnected because I was living with her but I didn't want to talk to her I didn't really want to have anything to do with her and she prayed and and um it just it was felt very awkward for me not to be able to connect with my mom and we weren't getting along and um I still continued my Friday night sessions and I told my friends about this person and you know I told all my friends about them and you know everyone was quite supportive about it but I do remember after about being home for about three weeks, um, I told the person that I had had this very uh, deep uh, friendship with. Uh, that was the, my the friend of mine that was a tarot card reader. And so in one of our Friday night sessions, when I was talking to them about this relationship and what my plans were, she said that she was getting a download from my spirit guides and that um, and she kind of started to do a channeling and said, I need to tell you something. And she started to draw out on a picture, basically what, what, uh, the, what, what my spirit guides were saying was like, this is what, what, what Natalia is. And this is what he is kind of in symbols. And this is the person that she's ac actually supposed to be with. And it's not this person that she's met while she was away. Mm -hmm. So this person is, is, and while she's drawing it, she's also speaking and she, her voice completely changed as well, but she had it. And this person, um, on a generally was very quite calm, had a very soft, very kind of gentle nature about her. But when she was speaking to me, or like in a very strong warning, her voice was very stern, very firm, very strong. Like you cannot be with this person. This person is going to cause a lot of chaos for you in your life. It's going to throw you off of what you're supposed to be doing. And it's not in your path. It's not the right path for you. Mm. And this person isn't necessarily a bad human being, but he has seen a lot of light in you and you have seen a lot of light in him. So it's definitely something that can be very appealing, but it's not what is meant for you. Mm -hmm. So because this was communicated to me through a picture and also through a very, very strong message through this person that I had trusted, um, I was a little bit disappointed, but at the same time I took it as truth and I was like, okay, you know, I guess the universe allowed for me to meet with this person. It allowed for me to open up my heart again after a couple of years of, of closing and, and being afraid to be with anyone again. And it just kind of was part of my healing journey. So I basically took that information that my mom had been telling me in other words, but because it was coming from this source, I, I took it as truth. And um, I made the quick decision to uh, let go and dissolve of that, of that relationship. And um, it wasn't difficult for me to do that. I just, you know, said it wasn't meant to be. And I was grateful for the friendship that formed, but it wasn't meant to be. And the person didn't take it super well. But at the end of the day, you know, I was here and he was there. And it was just that's what happened. And um, I remember telling my mom just, you know, I just want you to know that I'm not involved with this person anymore. And I could tell like she was just so relieved just from the look on her face. She was just like, oh, you know, I could tell that she felt like her prayers had been answered. And uh, shortly thereafter, um, I met my husband, my current husband, and uh, the relationship with my husband was, was very different. I, um, it happened very quickly. We were set up by the same person that I actually did the soulmate invitation to. So I told this person, this friend of mine, that I had dissolved of this relationship I had while I was away. And she was like, you know what, I'm kind of relieved in a way because I've been wanting to set you up with a person for a while now. And I know you were just kind of not in the right place, but I really feel like this is the right person for you. And I was kind of like, no, I just, 
I don't know. Like I, you know, I was still feeling a bit of unsettled about it, but long story short, she ended up setting us up and, um, we ended up going on a, on a first date and we connected really strongly and we had so much in common. So, so, so much in common, um, from our upbringing. And, uh, we ended up falling in love very, very quickly, very quickly over a summer. And, um, yeah, we just, we fell in love very fast and I felt like I could trust him. I told him basically almost everything that I had gone through and was very much afraid to share with, with a person. That was one of my fears is that if I tell this person that I had this disease and I've gone through all of this madness and all this kind of like supernatural stuff, he's going to think I'm crazy and going to leave me. And that was kind of my underlying fear that I had is that I, I would never find a person that would accept my supernatural kind of, uh, spiritual way of life Mm -hmm. but he was very very accepting and um yeah I was like no I've always known that you you're different and I accept you for who you are and like your past doesn't matter to me because I trust who you are today and I love you and um so yeah I really felt like after I kind of spilled my beans to him and told him the whole truth and he was extremely accepting and very loving towards me I felt like okay this is the person I could potentially see myself spending the rest of my life with because I'm kind of not wanting to do this um, pointless dating thing where I'm just jumping from one person to the next. I really don't want to do that in in my life anymore. And Mm -hmm. um, I I ended up, um, yeah, being with him for about seven months before I ended up getting pregnant. And um, that was just kind of like for me, I said, you know, I want to keep this child and I also want to spend the rest of my life with you and so this person said yeah I do agreed we wanted the same thing and ended up having uh, moved out together and and moved into a new home and I ended up having a very beautiful pregnancy it was one of the most beautiful pregnancies I could have hoped for I didn't get sick I didn't get nauseous I was happy I was in a great mood everything was very healthy and um, you know throughout this whole entire time I was of course I was still practicing meditation and you know doing um, yoga and and uh, you know doing uh, crystal crystal healing and I was practicing on on my partner as well mm-hmm. and um, there was a lot of you know more intense <laughs> Um, healing sessions with him and activations. And so, you know, nothing was necessarily taking me off of that trajectory. Um, But I did um, end up having a very traumatic and intense birth experience with my son. So I had a very kind of full on two and a half day labor that was very arduous, Mm -hmm. very painful. (laughs) um, And just kind of I had planned to have a very natural water birth, mm-hmm. with like not no no drugs and just kind of in a tub and just very, you know, like natural per se. I had taken some hypnobirthing courses. So it's like, like hypnosis to kind of alleviate the pain. Um, and so I was kind of hoping for the best that I would have a very natural birth. And it ended up being kind of more or less an emergency C-section. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was a very, I felt very, very, uh, with, with a lot of drugs, I was basically on opiates for a good four days after my, my son was born. And, you know, I, I praise God that we're okay and we're healthy now, but it took me a long time for me to kind of get over the fact that what I had hoped for and planned to be a very natural kind of, uh, you know, graceful, uh, powerful experience was kind of stolen away from me because I was heavily medicated. I was in a hospital with, you know, like, under a lot of drugs and it was just, it was very, very disappointing for me. And it kind of broke my heart that I couldn't have what I wanted. And, Mm -hmm. um, it made, you know, breastfeeding very difficult because I was medicated for a while. And and so it was very, very challenging for me after that. And I feel because of all of the stuff that I had experienced before on a spiritual level and whatever entities that I had allowed in, because I definitely felt like there was periods where, and sessions and healing sessions and all of that, where I had let certain things in. Um, and after the birth that I had, um, mind you, I remember right before they cut me open, I remember my mom and me and my husband praying to Jesus actually. Mm. Um, because it was just so after so many hours of not feeling like things were okay. And he wasn't, I wasn't like things weren't necessarily progressing in a really good way. I kind of was like, okay, I'll pray to Jesus at this point, you know, like I have nothing to, 
to hide at this point. And like, you know, I was just kind of at my wit's end in a desperate mode. And my mom was praying and she said, let's pray together to Jesus that this, this goes well and that we lay this in his hands. So we all prayed together and thank the Lord that everything came out well. Um, and I ended up, um, you know, he was fine after a few days we came home, but, um, to simplify, I ended up having a postpartum depression, mm-hmm. um, you know, for a good eight to nine months. It was just very, very, everything that I had experienced before, as far as having a blissful, happy, uh, pregnancy and life and being a very outgoing bubbly, not bubbly per se, but a very outgoing kind of happy, um, uplifting person, all of that, all of that just came crumbling down and I became very isolated and quiet and introverted. And I wasn't practicing any meditation or any yoga or any of that for a good eight to nine months. I completely just shut off Mm. and it's almost like I went numb. And, um, you know, I did experience, of course, just astronomical levels of love for my son. I never got to the point where I was feeling like I resented my son or or any bad feelings towards Mm -hmm. him, but I definitely felt like very low energy, not motivated. I felt completely alienated of my, of who I, who I thought I was. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't really necessarily experience just like that level of joy that a lot of mothers experience. I just felt overwhelmed and exhausted and, um, yeah. So for eight to nine months, I was just kind of floating around mentally. It was very hard. It's hard for me to describe. And if anyone's out there listening who who have gone through postpartum depression, what I would encourage you to do is to seek help um, and to know that um, depression is definitely something that I do feel that is not necessarily just a physical condition. It's definitely a very spiritual condition. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and it's not a coincidence that uh, everything that I was practicing before because I was so unaware of what the true nature was that I would have such a crash and burn after such a kind of positive um, pregnancy. So Mm -hmm. just be very mindful that depression isn't necessarily just a psychological condition that can be solved with medication. It definitely, I feel I would encourage for you to see people um, that are very, very planted in the word and educated on deliverance because depression definitely, I feel, is demonic oppression. Yeah. And uh, because it robs you of the joy of the Lord, of the joy that you are supposed to feel when you are under the grace of God's love. And, um, you know, I started to come out of my depression about nine, ten months after my son was born. And uh, that's when I kind of to restart doing the meditation and the yoga and all of that because I felt like, why, Natalia, you've learned all of this stuff. This is what you've been given it for is to use these tools when you're feeling bad, when you're feeling low. That's what these things are for, Um, especially when they're for, not just when you're having a good time, but especially when you're having a bad time. That's what meditation works. So I started to practice these things again. And um, another thing, too, that I that I was, that I struggled with for a long time is that I was, you know, highly kind of addicted to marijuana for a good 12 years. I, you know, before my son, before I became pregnant, I was using marijuana heavily for about, you know, anywhere between, yeah, about 10 years. And when I became pregnant, I was breastfeeding. I I stopped uh, cold turkey, but the mental desire was still in the back of my mind. So I knew I couldn't do it, obviously, because I didn't want to, you know, pass it on to my son. Mm -hmm. Um, But the desire was still there. So it wasn't like I didn't want it. I wanted it. I just knew I couldn't do it. And so after I stopped breastfeeding, I began to smoke again because the desire was there. And um, so I I started doing the same thing again. And and during this whole time, um, it was very, very, very challenging between me and my current, like me and my husband. We were having, you know, it was very, very hard because we barely knew each other before we became pregnant. And then I you know, had a baby and had postpartum depression and he was working full time, you know, to, to support the family. So it was very, very difficult time, you know, and there was a lot of cyclical, you know, um, just arguing and fighting and also just a lot of, a lot of heaviness in the home. And, um, I felt like no matter what meditations, no matter what mantras, no matter what healing modalities, no matter what healer I would go see, um, you know, at one point I felt I couldn't do this anymore because we just, I didn't feel like we were growing closer. I felt like we were growing apart and, you know, I would even 
take my husband to go see like a shaman and, you know, try to, to, to get some type of resolution to our relationship so that we could stick together because in my heart, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to, uh, let him go. I didn't want to get a divorce or, I mean, I didn't want to dissolve of the relationship because I had grown up in that and I we had both kind of made a commitment that we would do the best that we could so that we could give our son a strong family life Mm -hmm. and um we yeah we went to go see a healer and you know things would get better for a little bit and then things would get worse and um you know fast forward to about two and a half years after my son was born none of the things that I was practicing no matter how hard I would you know meditate you know, for love and light to come in and to get rid of the darkness, it, nothing, it was almost like things just kept getting worse, especially emotionally for me. I just felt so frustrated. Um, I was supposed to go back to my job after maternity leave was over and that ended up not working out. Um, you know, that job was no longer available to me anymore. So financially things were strained. Um, the relationship with my mother was kind of like a teeter totter. It would go up and it would go down. Um, my, although I was kind of out of the woods of postpartum depression, I still didn't feel like an exorbitant amount of joy in my life. I didn't really feel like a sense of peace. Um, and no matter how many times I would speak to my spirit guides for guidance and how many things I would, you know, how much information I would get when I would get into these deep meditations. And I started doing the mirror meditations again. And I would write letters to my husband when I would be in an altered state of consciousness and write letters to him about, you know, who he was and what we were meant to be and that we were twin flames. And, um, you know, just to re what a twin flame is, is basically in the, in kind of, uh, uh, new age. And I guess alternative spirituality is, is basically like, kind of like a soulmate it's basically the person that the universe has designed for you to be with it's kind of like your spiritual match and so I thought that that's what he was to me and so I tried many different things and um you know I just started to feel kind of very exhausted very mentally spiritually and physically exhausted from everything that I had experienced and not necessarily feeling any sense of peace and I feel like because my mom was praying for me so much And I didn't know, I mean, I mean, I know that my mom was praying for me, but I just didn't know how strongly she was praying for me. And there was also another person that was praying for me that I didn't know was praying for for me who revealed it to me afterwards. But, um, the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ started to reveal himself to me. So, um, you know, I was doing some yoga at home and I would meditate and I would invite my son to, to do some with me. And I remember he probably only did it once with me once or twice. And after the once or twice that he did it with me, I remember asking him to join me and he was like, no, I don't want to. Like he would just kind of shake his head and walk away and play with a toy. Like he didn't really seem very interested in it. Mm -hmm. And, um, Jesus started to show up in my dreams. And um, there was three very, very powerful dreams that I had before I gave my life to Christ um, that were all very, very similar dreams. Um, They all happened in the span of one month. And the gist of the dream was that me and my husband were kind of strolling through the city, just having a great time. And then all of a sudden, it would be kind of like a you know, lights, lights out in the city, everything would go dark, um, kind of, kind of a post-apocalyptic scene where like all the, you know, the energy grid goes off and all the lights are off. And, but then, uh, on on top of everything going dark, it was like me and my husband were completely alone. There was nobody else around us. And so the lights would go off. Me and my husband would look to each other and we would be like, what's going on? We need to find a way out of this. Like what's, what's happening here. And, I remember that every single time at that point, my husband would be kind of in a panic state. But oddly enough, even though the lights were out and we felt completely isolated, like nobody else was around us, I would feel a very strong sense of peace in my heart. Um, But at that point, a demonic entity or a demonic presence, a very dark force would manifest itself. And in the three dreams, it was always like a very dark, ominous, like shadow silhouette and it would appear to us. And at this point, we would, you know, grab each other's hands and kind of run away from it and, and try to find a way out. And my husband would get more and more into a state of further fear. And we weren't necessarily finding a way out. We would 
get to a dead end, another alley. Um, and the more we ran from it, the larger this presence would get. So it would start off as something kind of like in the so somewhat more or less in the size of a human form. But the further we ran from it, the more we ran from it, the bigger it would get and the closer it would come to us. And it would always get to a point where this thing was just almost completely around us and overwhelming us in its presence. It was so dark. And my husband would get to a point of just complete and utter panic, almost to the point of death. And we would get to this dead end where like literally we have nowhere to go. We're completely overwhelmed by this dark, ominous presence that would just, it was so awful. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It's just, I don't have any, but I'm just saying it's just, it was the worst feeling. But mm -hmm. my husband was always like in a state of, okay, what are we going to do? Why are you not more worried? Why are you not like, we're about to die here. What do we do? And I would always turn to him and say, there's nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. We are protected and we are safe. And I would turn around and um, I would put my hands out towards this presence and I would put both of my hands out. And in that moment, this in every single one of these three dreams, I would say, you cannot pass. You have no power. And I command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoa. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it makes me almost want to cry every single time I share it. Mm. When I say this, these light beams, like these powerful, not beams, but just this light would come out of my, this kind of my, blinding light would come mm. out of my hands and completely shatter this darkness into billions of pieces. Wow. Completely just dissolve it, just dissolve it. And it, this, ha this dream occurred three times in one month and it happened exactly the same way. Wow, and and this and this is a time in your life when you're not walking with Jesus as as your personal savior. You you're still very much, um, you know, into the new age type ideas. So it's yeah. just amazing that he would almost sounds like a prophetic dream, really, that he was showing you that that um, his light casts out darkness before you're even, you know, walking. Yeah. It's just wow, that is wonderful. It was very powerful. And, and every single time, I mean, especially the first time after I woke up from this, I was like, oh my gosh, like what, <laughs> you know, it's kind of ast astounding to, to, to feel what that feels like after having a dream like that. And so I didn't even know what to think about it because none of my teachings or teachers per se, or none of the books I was reading was giving me an answer to that other than that Jesus Christ is also an ascended master and that he could be one of your spirit guides, if not your pro primal spirit guide, like your predominant spirit guide mm -hmm. or like, you know, source of guidance or like your spirit, your angel that you speak to your, your master. Cause everybody has a different ascended master they connect to. So, you know, I, the idea of me warming up to Jesus Christ as being my chosen ascended master was kind of what I was correlating it to. Mm -hmm. Um, but after the third time, I was starting to get confused, like, what does this mean? And I even tried to share it with my husband. And I, I think I spoke about it to him. And I told him it and he didn't know what to make of it. I mean, I didn't even really know what to make of it. And I didn't really tell anybody about it. Um, but around that exact same time, um, when I was trying to make sense of it all, uh, I also ended up watching a video on YouTube from a, a kind of like a Christian truther who used to also be involved in New Age and exposes a lot of the deception in New Age and is now kind of has a, you know, online YouTube, um, I guess, ministry, if you want to call it, or just at least outreach to people mm -hmm. about um, about New Age and that kind of thing. And I remember watching one of his videos and was like, no way. Like just shocked and I was like, oh my God, this is so intense. Like there's no way this could be true. And so I watched it and it did affect me, but I didn't, I just kind of just let it uh, go. I, I mean, I know obviously those were kind of seeds that the Lord was planting in my heart that I didn't even realize that were seeds and he just started to water them. <laughs> and and um, after this third dream, um, my family and I actually started to, um, 
because again, I was, I didn't stop meditating. I didn't stop doing all this other stuff. We ended up getting a parasite. Um, all three of us ended up getting a parasite on our skin. And uh, to make another long story short, this parasite was awful and it made our, our life even that much more stressful because we were, you know, having to, we went to one naturopath and was told it was this disease and then it was, and then it was like, no, it's not that, it's actually this. And so we tried the natural treatments for it and it just kept coming and going. And during this whole time, because it's so contagious, you're not allowed to really um, sleep in, in close parameters to each other. You have to sleep in separate beds. You have to wash everything vigorously every single day, top to bottom. Um, it's very itchy. It's like, the, it's like, a, it was a very, very, very stressful, very stressful period of time that lasted for almost half a year where it was coming and going and that it just wouldn't go away. So you can imagine that I was doing everything. I was saging, smudging my house. I was using crystals. I was meditating. I went to see a healer about it. Oh, I, everything that I had learned, everything that I had practiced, I basically just jammed it all into like those months and, and tried to absolve it on my, from my own knowledge and nothing was working. And so, um, add this to, to the whole mix of things of what me and, you know, my, my family, like life was already like, it was kind of my dead end. I felt like, okay, um, nothing that I'm doing is working and I'm not finding peace and things are only getting worse. And now it's to the point where my family is going through a very stressful, um, you know, health situation and it's affecting my son. Like, you know, what, what am I supposed to do? Like, what does this all mean? And I remember, you know, reaching out to my mother in tears and telling her, like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Like, um, everything that I've tried and everything that I've done, it, like nothing seems to be working. And, um, you know, now my family life is like really suffering because, you know, my son is stressed out from this and I'm stressed out and my husband's stressed out. And like, I feel like nothing can get worse. And I feel like, where, where am I supposed to go? Like me and my husband aren't getting along. Like I, I just was at, at my wits end. And she said to me that the night prior that she was praying for me and that, uh, the Lord, uh, that Jesus Christ, um, you know, said to her through the Holy spirit that, you know, your daughter, she's been seeking answers for many years and she has been looking in every single book other than the one book that she needs to look at. And she's very intelligent. And I've given her that intelligence. Mm -hmm. And I want her, I want you to tell her that I love her and that she's been running away from me and that I'm still here waiting for her. Like I, he said, she told me that one thing that really affected me was that she said that when he, the Holy Spirit was telling her this message for me is that she said she felt like um, that he was smiling, like, you know, that he, the Lord was watching me this whole time kind of, mm. you know, kind of run away as almost like a child that runs away from their mom at the park. But, mm -hmm. you know, he wasn't angry at me, but he was smiling at me the whole entire time and said that I'm here for her and all of the answers that she's ever needed are in me. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And uh, she said, he told me to tell you that, you know, you're very intelligent and you're, you're really, really smart. And he's given you that. And um, you're not going to find the answers in any of those books. Mm -hmm. um, you, you need to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, like, it kind of really affected me, but at the same time, I took it like with a grain of salt, you know, I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, so she was crying on the phone and I was like, okay, you know, like, I don't know what to do with that, but I guess, yeah, I'll let that kind of settle in. And, um, so the very what? next day I, uh, oh, sorry. had like another kind of big argument or something had happened that particular Saturday where it was just kind of like the, la the, the last nail in the coffin or the last the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, just that was it. That was it. I felt like I can't, I can't do this anymore. You know, I can't do this on my own anymore. And I've had these dreams and my mom's telling me about Jesus. So mm -hmm. I remember, um, just 
was like, okay, the Bible. I'm like, I don't even know if I still have mine. And so I looked for it and I hadn't pulled it out. I hadn't read it in about 12 to 13 years. Mm -hmm. And I found, and I found, I found it. I think, yeah, I still had that old Bible my mom had given to me and I pulled it out and I had also pulled out another book. So it was kind of in a point of like ultimatum. And, Mm -hmm. um, I was about to read a course in miracles, which is by, um, which is a book that's very, very, very popular. Um, you know, Oprah endorses it. It's uh, kind of Marianne Williamson, who's a very popular author and speaker in kind of the self-help new age spirituality. Um, she very much endorses it and, and has written her own books based off of this book. Um, and someone had given it to me. I had picked it up a few months before and I had never gotten around to reading it. And so... I picked up the Bible and I picked up this other book and I sat on my bed and I was very much prepared to start to read A Course in Miracles because what I I was under the impression that it was kind of like a channeled, it was, it is a channeled, it's not an impression I was under, it was, it was very much a a channeled book. So the authors of this book uh, wrote the book saying that they were channeling some, you know, that Jesus had come to them in, in a dream or that he was speaking to them and he was telling them that this is kind of like a new updated version of, you know, Christian philosophy for our modern times. So that kind of appealed to me because it was using all the right language and it said Holy Spirit, it said all, you know, kind of things that I was familiar with. Um, But in a, but it was twisted in a very kind of, uh, in a very, very non-biblical way. So it was appealing to what I had believed for the last, you know, six years. So I sat on my bed I had the Bible on my right side and I had this other book on my left side. And uh, I opened up my laptop and I had basically gone on YouTube to prepare myself to start doing the lessons for A Course in Miracles because it's a it's a very thick book. It basically looks like a it looks like a Bible. Mm-hmm. And um, I would prayed. I started to pray and uh, I prayed out to Jesus the way that I did and got myself to a state of uh, like humility um not that I got myself but I just basically prayed and I remembered being that four-year-old little girl who Mm -hmm. used to pray to Jesus without having any expectations but just pouring my heart out and just having a normal conversation with him and Mm so I just got to that point of uh and so that that uh place of humility where I was like you know what nothing that I've been doing nothing that I've been practicing Nothing that I've been meditating, nothing that I've used has worked. Nothing's working. And now my family and I are at this point where, like, there's no peace. There's no resolution. I don't, I'm not finding answers anywhere. So, Jesus, I'm talking to you like that innocent child that I used to be as a four-year-old girl. And, Jesus, if you are the, the person that you say that you are in the Bible... And that you are like not found in any other teaching that I've been practicing and you are who you say you are. Like if you are the son of God, share that with me and you have to show that to me now because I I don't know where else to go. And if this other book, which represents this other alternative form of spirituality is okay and it's another form to reach you then you have to share that with me so basically I was like either a or b you know it was that blue book of course in miracles represented that alternative uh form of spirituality and the bible was the bible it was like either I follow the bible and the word of god and that form of you know who Jesus is and 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 that form of life and that way of life and and follow that truth or do I follow which is the ultimate truth or do I follow this other side which is kind of a not ultimate truth kind of relative truth (laughs) and um, I cried out and I opened up my heart to Jesus and I said you know I know you've never left me I know you've always loved me and you've always tried to give me warnings and You've always tried to, you know, reach out to me. And I know I've been very, very stubborn, but I'm here with a completely open heart because what if I'm wrong? What I've been, what if I've been wrong? You know, what do I have to lose now? I have nothing to lose. I'm basically at my dead end. And 
I have all of the angels and guides and spirit guides and all of the ascended masters and all of the tarot card reading. And if all of that, if all the yoga and everything is not okay with you, like I want to, in the name of Jesus, I want to know, mm-hmm. you know, and I cried and I felt like a huge, huge, just like wave of peace just wash over me that I've never experienced in my life before in the mm. countless meditations and the countless, you know, uh, alternative like metaphysical practices that I've been in in those years. I had never felt that level of peace that just completely it wasn't just a physical experience or like this moment of alternate consciousness I just felt it kind of be in me but also around me and just kind of wash me and I had never felt that in any level of meditate nothing I've never Mm -hmm. felt that before and I just felt so much peace and uh I closed the prayer and um I was just about to press play on the YouTube video that I had revved up to uh, get started on my course. And um, I, uh, instead of pressing play on that video, I saw a small thumbnail that said former new age teacher uh, testimonial. And that really shot that really appealed to me that really kind of stood out. And so I clicked it right away without a second thought. Uh Uh-huh. And I ended up watching the, t- the testimonial of Warren B. Smith, um, who is oh, also... Wow. That's uh, a really yeah. good testimony. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a very, very powerful testimony. And the reason why it completely changed my life that night was because Warren B. Smith, uh, who's a, a very good speaker and author of this type of material, was speaking at the very end of his testimonial about A Course in Miracles mm. and how he was deceived by that. And how he was under demonic oppression and how he was experiencing this and that and that nothing's working and that he was praying for love and light to come and nothing was working until he used the words in the Bible and, you know, cast it out in the name of Jesus. And so that testimonial, which was about a 15, 20 minute testimonial, completely like I felt my entire nervous system going crazy. I thought I was shaking. I was like overwhelmed, just completely just like. I can't even describe what I felt in my nervous system. I just felt electricity and just felt like, oh, just totally shook by that. Mm-hmm. Not af- not afraid, but just so almost like, like as if, you know, you've had a mask on your entire life and somebody takes it off and you can finally see light for the first time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I just was so um, overwhelmed, but also relieved because I had prayed to give, to get an answer. And I still had the course in miracles on one side and the Bible on my other side, like basically on either side of my lap. Mm -hmm. And Warren B. Smith very clearly said towards the end of his testimonial, you know, if you're, anybody's out there seeking the truth and is seeking God, Mm -hmm. the course in miracles is a diction. It is not the truth and it turns the Bible upside down. And so that was it. That was it. I heard that and that was it. I yeah. I just felt like the, the Holy Spirit just broke through mm. and just said, Here you go, daughter. You've asked me for an answer and mm-hmm. I've given it to you right here in exactly the right context. And so in that mm-hmm. very instant, I just knew I had all the answer. I just I just felt I just felt I had the answer right in that minute. And um I ended up watching about two or three more testimonials that night um one more of his and another a few more and i think even one of your one of the people that you've even interviewed i think um so i ended up watching more testimonials that night and so that weekend i ended up having a very very radical uh transformation and gave my life to christ completely and i took every every single object um i idol every crystal every Mm -hmm. um Everything that I had in my home that I used to worship or, or pray to or, you know, tarot cards, all of that, I completely purged my house in 48 hours. I took everything out of my house and I threw it away. I prayed over my the items and I said, in Jesus name, may no person come across these materials to be deceived. And so I was wanting to burn it, but I didn't have the facilities to. And so I was mm-hmm. praying over that the Holy Spirit would just come and just just uh, protect, not protect it, but just to make sure that it would just go to waste and that nobody would come across it and, and be deceived by it. Um, 
It was a very radical 48 hours. I had, was praying nonstop to the Holy Spirit, to Jesus Christ. I invited him into my heart and I just completely repented. Mm. I repented for everything that I had done. And that was what was bringing me more peace is that, you know, instead of me living for the with the guilt and the shame of what I had um, done, I felt so much peace because I had given it to him. And I said, I repent and, I, and forgive me, forgive me, because I was confused and lost and I was deceived. I thought that everything that I was doing was in the name of love and light. I thought what I was doing was helping people. Yeah, I thought what I was yeah. doing was, you know, you know, helping the environment and bringing people more love in their life. Like I didn't know I was deceived. I was so mm-hmm. deceived and I'm so, so sorry, mm-hmm. but thank you for finding me. Thank you for finding me and, uh, and for forgiving me. And so even though it was like an intense 40 hours of just kind of like fl- basically going from like, you know, flipping the coin and it wasn't, it wasn't in any way, uh, like a, a long process for me, it was very radical. It was o- like literally overnight wow. and, um, Natalia, yeah, so, this, this is so yeah. so powerful, <laughs> so beautiful. We're actually running out out of time. Yeah, um, no, but so it's would, a good way to end it off. <laughs> I, I would so love for you to please pray because there must be there, there will be people listening to this right now that can identify. So please pray for them as we close the yes. show. So um, as I close this off in the uh, transformation that I had and the revelation that he made to me that was very personal, I just pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would encounter every single person that is listening to this. You encountered me in a way that was made for me, Lord. You knew how to encounter me so that there would be no questions left unanswered, so there would be no doubt left in my mind or in my spirit about who you are, about sovereignty, about who you are as the one true God, Lord. Jesus, I just pray that you would reveal yourself to these people listening who are questioning, who are lost, who are confused, Lord. I just pray the spirit of truth to come through in their lives in a way that they have complete peace in their heart and their mind that you are the way the truth and the life that you love them unconditionally and no matter what they have gone through no matter what they have done no matter what they have said no matter how far that they have run away from you that you are always always pursuing them lord you are always pursuing them way to um, welcome them back home with open arms and that your love is unconditional that there is nothing that we can do there is no work no um, act that we can do that will bring us salvation. We are we are saved by your grace, Lord, and it's by your grace alone and by your love alone that we are called back home into your arms, Lord. And so I just pray in Jesus' name that every person who's listening to this, if there's any questions that they have or any confusion that they have, that you would bring clarity to them in a very specific, special way for them, that they would have um, signs, miracles, and wonders and breakthrough in that area that people would encounter them and speak life over them, that they would have prophetic words come to them, that they would see the right messages, whether it be on a bus stop sign or in a, in a me- message on television or through a book or through a neighbor or through a conversation, but that you would give them encounter because it is only having a personal encounter with you, Jesus Christ, that we are told and shared and reveal to us that you are not a source, you are not just an energy, you are not a force, you are a person. You are a person who came to earth to die for our sins, who loves us unconditionally, and that we can be in relationship with forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so, so much, Natalia. God bless you, sister. Thank you so much. I guess we're going to have to do this in four parts. <laughs> I think so, yes. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'll Thank you so much, Laura. Speak to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio.